What's up guys, Rogue9 here, and with the recent nerf to Rook and Dox MP5 going live in Rainbow Six Siege, what better time than this to run a loadout meta-analysis comparing the new MP5 with the P90? Now that the MP5 is weaker than ever before, is it maybe time to start considering the P90 more seriously? What are the individual strengths and weaknesses of each gun? Let's go and find out. This video is sponsored by Moot, a community platform dedicated to players of the world's most popular games. Basically, the platform offers you the opportunity to stay in touch with the communities of your favorite games by sharing the latest memes, guides, highlight videos and discussions which are regulated by a simple up or down vote system that helps highlight the most relevant and entertaining posts. Now the platform also comes with a brand new looking for teammates feature. Let's say you're looking to get together a squad for Rainbow Six. You can do this by either creating a post or responding to an existing one. Filters include the platform and game mode you're looking to play and each post has a convenient comment section at the bottom where you can get in touch with your new team to arrange the first match. So if this sounds like something that would be useful to you, go ahead and click the appropriate link in the description below. As always, let's start out with a brief overview of the highlight stats for each gun, and at first glance, things actually look decently promising for the Pea Shooter 90. At least there are some advantages the gun seems to have. The killing capability of any given gun is probably the most important factor, and one of the key elements here is of course the damage per shot. Even after the nerf, the MP5 has a close range damage advantage up to 28 meters distance, and after that both guns do the same damage per shot. Fire rate is another important element of a gun's lethality because it for one determines the damage output per second, but of course beyond that in a game with one hit kill headshots, being able to spray more lead down range increases the headshot chances immensely. 800 RPM is actually only slightly below the average for the SMGs, so pretty good, but not nearly as good as 970, which is in fact the third highest rate of fire in the class, beaten only by Ella's Scorpion and Mira's Vector. This outstanding fire rate really helps close the gap between the P90 and MP5 in terms of the damage output per second. At close range, the MP5 is only better by 4 measly DPS, and at long ranges after drop-off, the P90 is actually significantly better, who would have thought? But of course, DPS is only a quick and dirty way of comparing weapons, because at the end of the day, it's always a race to see which gun can get to 100 HP the quickest. At ranges up to 80 meters, the P90 still consistently needs one or two more shots to incapacitate an opponent compared to the MP5, depending on the shot placement. And that means that despite the fire rate advantage, the time to down or kill for the P90 is always longer. Once we get out to longer ranges of 28 meters or more though, the advantage firmly swings over to the P90 since both guns have the same damage, which means the same number of required shots to down or kill, and that means that in theory the P90 is on average 96.39 milliseconds faster to kill than the MP5, not considering headshots. And the reason I highlight that these times are theoretical is that the further away you get from your target, the harder it becomes to hit each and every shot at max fire rate. In addition to that, it is also the question of how often you'll actually fight at distances of almost 30 meters. And nevertheless, all things equal, the P90 does offer a significant advantage at these ranges, and that's without the extended barrel attached which the P90 can attach, while the MP5 cannot. Now I would normally say that the extended barrel is a flawed attachment that has some disadvantages while not really offering that much in terms of improvement for the gun, but if long range fighting is something you will anticipate during any given round, the extended barrel on the P90 will simply remove the damage drop off entirely. You can do 22 points of baseline damage per shot at all ranges and that will make the P90 the second most powerful SMG in terms of damage per second after Jackal's PDW9. As long as you have the aim and the gun stays reasonably controllable then this might actually be a decent choice for the spawn peaking aficionados among you. But we'll get to the recoil and controllability a little later, let's revisit this discussion then. In terms of capacity, the P90 also comes with a significant advantage, and the reload time is only slightly longer for tactical reloads, so all in all, I would say that that round goes to the P90 as well. 
ADS time for both guns is the standard 300 milliseconds we see for all SMGs and yes, even Kaid's disappointing Org A3 has been fixed to adhere to this rule now. Hipfire differences between the two guns are negligible for prone, kneeling and standing still. The MP5 is better by a couple of pixels on average but literally it's a couple of pixels so virtually meaningless. Once you start moving though, the P90's hipfire spread becomes a little worse. And now for the recoil and controllability. Here the MP5 has the significant advantage of being able to attach a vertical grip and thereby reduce its vertical recoil by 40%. Yes, the recoil diamond of the MP5, i.e. the randomized element of the recoil, is larger and the gun will tend to wander off to the right with longer bursts, but all in all, this is a very controllable gun. Because of the low vertical recoil, I would actually recommend that you use the flash hider on the MP5 rather than the muzzle brake, since the flash hider provides both first shot vertical recoil reduction as well as an overall recoil diamond reduction, and that helps with the random movement over longer bursts. The muzzle brake only gives you first shot vertical recoil reduction, which is arguably not that important for the MP5 specifically. In contrast to this, the P90 has a smaller recoil diamond, but the lack of a vertical grip means that the muzzle climb on this gun is quite strong. Be prepared to have to counter the muzzle climb quite decisively. In terms of attachments to choose, the flash hider doesn't really do much since the recoil diamond is already pretty small and the muzzle brake can actually be quite helpful due to the significant first shot recoil of the gun. But of course the muzzle brake only affects the recoil on the first shot of every burst and that means that in practice the extended barrel is only a little harder to control. If you're really hell bent on going for long range spawn peaks then the zero damage drop off offered by the extended barrel might actually be worth considering. If you can hit your shots, 22 damage at 970 RPM at all ranges is no joke. But that is if you can hit all of your shots. So let's summarize all of these thoughts and let me give you my conclusion on which gun is the better option now that the MP5 has been made a bit weaker. The P Shooter 90 does come with some undeniable advantages. Fast fire rate, large magazine, very respectable reload times and in a way on paper this weapon shares a lot of the characteristics with Ella's Scorpion which was an absolute beast at launch. Long range damage output of the P90 is above average even without the extended barrel and if you do attach it the gun literally becomes more powerful than most assault rifles at longer ranges. But if tire adverts from the 90s have taught me anything then power is nothing without control and that in my opinion is the downfall of the P90. From 28 meters and onwards the P90 becomes the better choice as long as you can hit all of your shots but the increased recoil and lack of a vertical grip makes it quite challenging to stay on target at those ranges. Plus of course, and I feel like I'm repeating this in every video nowadays, the average kill range for siege is below 10 meters so the chances that you will get to fight at 28 meters plus are pretty slim anyways. The reason that the MP5 wins this head to head even after being nerfed is that it requires less shots to down or kill at normal combat ranges resulting in faster TTKs and it is far more controllable. Combine more power at the ranges that really count plus much higher user comfort and there you have the winning combination. For most players the MP5 is just easier to handle and use effectively and even veteran high skilled players will struggle to manufacture the situations in which the P90 could theoretically outperform. No matter what your experience level or your skill, 99 times out of 100 you will be better off with the MP5. So there it is, the stats confirm what most of us have always had a gut feeling for anyway. The MP5 is the gun to go with, but as always I am interested in hearing your thoughts. Do you use the P90 at all? How does the gun perform for you? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.